Go woke, go broke. I'm sure you've heard this phrase before at some point if you spend any time on the internet. It's a phrase meant to convey the simple message that if a movie, video game, TV show, book, advertisement, or something else that aims to make money goes woke, then it will fail in its attempt to make money. Because apparently, people have had enough of wokeness, and it always ruins the product. Now this may sound agreeable to some, but the phrase just completely falls apart, and there are two reasons for this. First, the absolute lack of meaning the word woke has, and the fact that the very statement itself is just wrong. Going woke does not make something go broke. I'll of course be expanding upon both of these arguments throughout this video, however I thought it would help my critique if we responded to someone who claims the validity of this phrase. So I watched this video that popped up in my recommended section by a channel called The Dave Cullen Show, who you might have heard of. This video was titled, Get Woke, Go Broke. Hollywood must change. And I thought this was the perfect video to use for my critique of the whole idea that wokeness leads to monetary failure for media. Also, if you appreciate what I do here, then check out the Fandom Initiative and the other channels who are a part of it. We all tackle problematic individuals or ideas as often as we can, so it would be great to have your support. However, let's just delve right into the video. The term get woke, go broke was coined a few years ago to describe the commercial failure that would befall a film or TV show that pushes current year identity politics. It means audiences will dislike it and it will become a commercial failure. These projects are usually accompanied by a mainstream woke press who run defense for the production and the filmmakers and who usually name call anyone who criticizes the film, labeling them some kind of ist or phobe. So I think this first section here highlights one of my main arguments, the absolute lack of meaning the word woke has. You can watch so many videos of people talking about the negative aspects of wokeness, but you rarely ever get any sort of satisfying definition for the word outside of identity politics or just politics. Politics. Like, what does this actually mean? I mean, it used to belong to the black community, who used it in relation to staying aware of social injustice, however, it has since been hijacked by people who use it without any thought. Like, is it just any film with left-leaning or even just center-leaning politics? Because that's a lot of movies. Most movies, even. Or is it movies that push identity politics, and in which case, how would you define these identity politics? Is it strictly limited to openly feminist movies like Ghostbusters 2016? Or does it also encompass the many movies that you guys call woke just for having minorities in them, such as The Batman, Multiverse of Madness, The Last Jedi, that all have either very little to no mention of race or gender whatsoever? And this also begs the question, what does go woke, go broke even mean? Yes, Ghostbusters 2016 was a bit of a flop. But Captain Marvel was a commercial success. Both of these movies apparently use a feminist agenda to sell their movies, so why didn't Captain Marvel flop despite everyone apparently hating it? You see how inconsistent this is? And I think this lack of a clear definition for the word woke is problematic, because it gets used as a genuine point of criticism by so many people, whether it be for movies or video games or even important political topics. And when the word is basically meaningless, it becomes a buzzword that people begin to react negatively to, because it's always being associated with something negative. And this leads the word to being abused by so many people. Essentially, when you can twist a word's meaning into being whatever serves your purpose in a specific situation, and especially when that purpose is almost always one that questions the existence of certain social groups, then it becomes a fucking problem. So yeah, I think it's important to stay aware of how meaningless the word woke is, and how it gets abused for messed up reasons. However, I also want to mention the second part of his statement where he says that media companies often defend against any criticism their media receives by calling fans ists or phobes, because this point is flawed. Yes, it is true that some companies, and even people, try to shield off any criticism by playing the oh you're just racist card. This is especially something big companies do when they for example add a little bit of gay representation in their movies, but not enough so that it pisses off the conservative shareholders, but just enough so that they can use the you're homophobic argument when receiving criticism while they're off funding anti-gay politicians. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that social activism isn't always perfect, and sometimes you can be called something you simply aren't. 
I'm not saying these problems don't exist, but I am saying that they're not nearly as much of a problem as people make them out to be. Last year, we had a couple of these moments where a TV show was getting a lot of negative attention, both from people who simply didn't like them, but also from people who were angry at the inclusion of black people or women, or the calling out of toxic men. However, when the studios send out messages calling the small parts of the fanbase who were actually being racist, sexist, or just overall toxic, a lot of fans took that personally and claimed that, oh, you're saying all the fans are racist just because we didn't like your characters? And this was, of course, really telling. I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of Reva's character in the Kenobi series, but when Disney sent out a message condemning the racists who were sending Moses Ingram hate, and when they then said that racist people have no place in the Star Wars fandom, I agreed with them. I didn't take that personally, because why would I? So many people got so angry about this statement, and I think it's really telling that if you begin to get defensive when a company calls out a small part of the fandom for being racist, because if you didn't see yourself in the message, then you wouldn't react like this. I just think it's worthy to mention this whole, oh, woke companies will call all the fans racist and sexist when their media is bad. Because while this can happen, absolutely, it's often blown way out of proportion and a lot of people end up outing themselves as the very thing that's being called out. But anyways, let's move on. I don't believe that Hollywood is unaware of how unpopular and ultimately unprofitable these types of productions are, actually. For decades, they've known exactly how to entertain the masses. They have generations worth of audience feedback and marketing data on what storytelling formulas work and what don't. They know these deeply polarizing and divisive themes and political messages are mostly disliked and have an overall negative impact upon the quality of the production. So why include them? Ultimately, Hollywood is in the business of making money, generating profit from the films and TV series they make. Why mess with the winning formula by compromising them with, you know, wokeness? Why jeopardize their potential profitability? We've had a few years now of wokeness, and it's been proven time and time again to be a major negative for a TV show or film. And yet, it continues. The only conclusion that I can reach is that, at present, Hollywood studios are willing to take the financial hit because the ideological message means more to them. The propaganda comes before the profit. I just want to take a second to appreciate how wrong what he just said was. Hollywood absolutely does not care more about some ideological message than money. That's a gross misunderstanding. Propaganda before profit? That's just wrong. Companies want to make money. That's their top priority. You even said that yourself, but then you shoot yourself in the foot by not understanding that so-called wokeness actually makes them money through many different avenues like positive press and advertisers, not just how the movie performs. And as we'll get into a bit later, some woke movies do poorly at the box office, but most do pretty good. It's so easy to make the argument that woke movies flop when you can just call any poorly received movie woke. However, I just want to nail down the point that companies don't care about the message even remotely as much as the profit. Sure, there are the creators behind the media, for example, the animators, the writers, the directors, the actors, and all the rest, who often do care about representing important issues in the media they create. And then there are the executives, who most likely don't give a flying fuck about the messages they convey, as long as it makes them money, or gives them attention, which even if it is controversial attention, still generates them money. You speak as though whether something is good is part of the equation. It's not. It's money. It's only money. The more people who watch, the more money they make. That's it. It's literally all about money. Even if there have been so-called woke box office bombs, companies will keep making woke movies because the majority of them do really well. And you show your misunderstanding of this when you say wokeness has proven time and time again to be a negative for TV shows and movies. And this is again where this lack of meaning of the word woke comes into play because you can basically just make shit up. The highest grossing movies are the non-woke ones. The MCU is usually always woke, however Infinity War, Endgame, and No Way Home weren't woke, and that's why they made so much money. But Captain Marvel was just a fluke, or it was a lie, because of course cinemas were empty as we all know. It even helps when they can call something woke before it comes out, thus priming their audience to hate it. But then if it does really well, then they can just completely switch their stance and say it destroys wokeness, because their audiences likely aren't competent or aware enough 
to realize what frauds you people are. I know I'm projecting a lot onto Dave Cullen right now, when in reality I'm talking about all of these anti-woke channels. I mean, don't get me wrong, Dave's videos aren't really that much different, but still, I just want to make certain that you know that I'm also talking about other channels. But yeah, my point is just to illustrate how fraudulent the word woke can be when used by people with bad intentions. Next, he talks briefly about a couple projects that proved how going woke turns you broke. And his examples are of course Ghostbusters 2016, I swear the only reason why this movie is still somewhat relevant is solely because these people can't let go of it. He also mentions Batwoman, which was bad because it was woke. Obviously, right? It can't be due to bad writing. No, that wouldn't make sense. It must be because it's woke. He also mentions Call Jane, a movie about abortion. I wonder why he didn't like this one. But basically, it didn't perform very well at the box office, so this definitely proves that wokeness means a movie will fail. There can't be any other reasons such as perhaps the box office still suffering from the pandemic, or a poorly advertised movie, or something else. However, the fact that Call Jane and Charlie's Angels failed is indisputable proof that woke movies will fail. That's the third law of gravity, people. He then references an article by Breitbart, which is already a red flag. And the article talks about how wokeness is the real reason box office numbers are down compared to 2019, rather than the pandemic still affecting cinemas even now. The thing I love about this article is that they have all the correct information right there, but then they just flush it right down the toilet to instead rant about how it's wokeness that has caused the box office to drop this year. Now, if you didn't know, and this is something that I didn't know either myself until my friend Charles told me about it, but every year since 2019, which is the last normal year before the pandemic, has had a significant decrease in total box office revenue compared to before the pandemic. As you can see here in domestic box office numbers, 2022 made $7 billion, which is higher than both 2020 and 2021, but still significantly lower than 2019 and the decade before that. To think that the effects of the pandemic on the box office along with people and companies' relationships with cinema and streaming, that these aspects aren't the main contributor towards the lower box office numbers and instead is because of wokeness? would just be incredibly naive. And you may think that, oh well, the biggest movies of the last two years were not woke, which means that if all movies were just not woke, there wouldn't be a problem. And this is again dumb. We of course have Top Gun Maverick and No Way Home, which aren't woke, which is a statement that can definitely be contested, but for the sake of argument, I'll give you that. Let's say they're not woke, but then what about Avatar The Way of Water? This movie can definitely be classified as woke when you look at some of the environmentalist and anti-military and anti-imperial messages, or the focus on indigenous tribes and the message that comes with that, or the other reasons why this movie is woke. But it's doing very well at the box office. Furthermore, four of the highest grossing movies this year were MCU movies and The Batman, and all four of them have been claimed to be woke. But still, all four of them have made over $750 million at the box office, and even some of them getting close to a billion dollars. Thinking about how last year was still affected by the pandemic, as well as some of these movies being released pretty quickly on streaming sites to help grow those sites, I can soundly say that these so-called woke movies did pretty good. So the moral of the story is, if the product is good, or if there's hype surrounding it, then audiences will pay to see it in the cinema. That's true for every movie. You agree with that. But it doesn't matter if it's woke or not. The only difference is when a woke movie is good and gets good praise, then this online crowd of anti-woke people don't call it woke. Then they just call it a good movie. There's a lot of double standards here. Also, any argument against wokeness that uses Breitbart as a source should really not be taken seriously. I mean, just look at this brilliant display of unbiased journalism at its finest. So here are this summer's lessons, Hollywood woke tards. Instead of making movies no one wants to see, make movies people want to see. Stop with the spell-killing, insulting woke tardery that leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth and kills the one thing that makes a blockbuster a blockbuster. Repeat business. Toy Story movies can be counted on to gross around $400 million domestically. Lightyear came up about $300 million short. Gee, Disney, maybe don't try to groom children by putting homosexuality in a $250 million kids movie. Yeah, I'm sorry, but using a far-right news and opinion outlet like Breitbart, which has no integrity whatsoever, to support your anti-woke arguments really takes away any credibility your argument had in the first place. The article goes on to cite three woke films that underperformed at the box office. Lightyear is a woke Toy Story film. I'm sure a lot of parents didn't want to take their children to that train wreck. Like I've said many times already by now, this movie literally just shows two women kiss briefly, 
nothing explicit. It was no difference between that and any other straight kiss in a children's movie before. Are you telling me that if you watch Tarzan with your children and Tarzan and Jane kiss, that you'll be getting up and taking your children out of there because that's just too much of a woke train wreck? No, of course not. People just have a problem with gay representation, it's that simple. Oh, and there's a black female co-lead. That probably gets them fuming as well. Thor Love and Thunder was a big disappointment, and as the article points out, it basically emasculated Thor. Now while Lightyear did flop financially, at least in the box office, Thor absolutely didn't. Like I said before, it's in the top grossing movies of the year, in a year still affected by the pandemic. I don't think Marvel will have much trouble justifying making movies that make them money. Oh, so here you're just talking about people not liking the movie very much. But it wasn't about Thor being demasculated because of some woke agenda. No, they simply tried to lean too heavily on what made Thor such a standout character in Ragnarok and Infinity War. But they missed the mark. We liked the comedy, but it just became too much and it didn't really land as well as it used to. And some of his seriousness and emotion was taken away from him. But whether you liked the movie or not, it still did pretty well at the box office, despite being woke. And lastly, he mentions Crimes of Grindelwald, which I won't get into because there are many reasons why someone wouldn't like it, but I can't quite seem to put my mind to it. And if you also consider the poor fan reception to TV shows like Rings of Power and She-Hulk, it's not much better on television. Ah yes, She-Hulk and Rings of Power, the two shows that came out this year. What about House of the Dragon, The Boys, Stranger Things, Andor, Moon Knight, and so many more? All shows that by your definitions are woke, but that were still very popular and profitable. Your argument is flawed. However, at the end of the day, this video is pointless because he doesn't clarify what he means by woke. It's literally meaningless and he uses the word in whichever way will help him make his current point. There is no consistency, and even if we give him the benefit of woke being a valid adjective to describe a movie, then he still fails to make a correct statement. There's not nearly enough evidence that Get Woke, Go Broke is real, because while yes, some woke movies have failed, so many woke movies do really well at the box office. I mean, the fact that companies still make these so-called woke movies should be indicator enough of its financial reliability, because companies care about making money. They have people whose job it is to research this stuff. If including more progressive and leftist messaging in movies wasn't profitable, then companies would stop doing it. But people generally like seeing progressive messages, and people get angry when it isn't in their movies. So either way, companies are encouraged to include it in their movies. Now, whether wokeness makes movies better or worse is a completely different topic altogether, and this video has nothing to do with that. Dave's video is defending Get Woke, Go Broke as a concept, and that's all about economic profit, so that's what we focused on. Listen, I'm not trying to change the mind of someone like Dave here, or all the other content creators I cover who make a living off of fueling this fire and spreading an anti-woke agenda. I'm rather trying to change the opinion of you, the viewer, or at least give you my perspectives. It's up to you whether or not you want to listen or even take what I say to heart, but hopefully I can convey to you why I think videos like these are wrong, and why I think all this focus on wokeness being bad is meaningless. It moves most conversations away from what's actually important to rather focus on this buzzword that can mean a million different things. However, I hope you've all enjoyed the video. Leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, and also thank you to my Patreons, such as Ben Joseph. But other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe and peace out.